PK here. For this episode of PK's Retro Reviews, I will be reviewing Frogbog for the Intellivision. I personally don't own an Intellivision, but I do have this Intellivision compilation called Intellivision Lives. This is the PS2 version, which also, full disclosure, is a blue disc, so that's something to look at because a lot of times their older PS2s have a tendency to stop playing the blue discs for whatever reason. I've had people tell me that anyway, so I thought I would bring that up before I um, tell you, hey, go out and buy the television lives on PS2. It's also available on Xbox, GameCube, and Nintendo DS. Now, the Nintendo DS version is the more expensive one. That is something to take into consideration if you're going to buy Intellivision Lives. Some of you might be wondering, where did I first hear about this game? Actually, the first place I heard this game was a movie called Grandma's Boy. Insert clip. Who's going down? Taking the title, old man. The game is Frogbug. Let's do it. So here we go. Here's my review of Frogbog. Frogbog on the Intellivision, also known as Frogs and Flies on the Atari 2600 and Commodore 64, is a 1982 video game by Mattel, who also happens to be the creators of Intellivision. In this game, the player or players control a frog sitting on a lily pad. Each frog is a different color. You can play against the computer or another player. The object of the game is quite simple. Just eat the most flies. In this game, you jump from one lily pad to the other while flies are flying around. You use the fire button to release the frog's tongue to eat the fly. Each time a fly is captured, it's worth a certain amount of points. The game has a day and night sequence, which is pretty cool for a game that came out in 82, and from the beginning to the end of the game, the sky turns a darker shade of blue and eventually turns black at the end of the game. There are two different difficulty levels for Frogbog. On the normal difficulty level, the jumping off and landing points are fixed in an arc-like pattern. This is the one I recommend starting out with, considering it's much easier to score points and is far more forgiving. You basically have to time your jumps to catch the flies who come in your jump path. On the harder difficulty level, your frog has a greater freedom of movement and can catch flies while on the ground. The downside is there's no set jumping and landing points, which could create a situation where you end up in the water and have to swim back. Trust me, you don't want to end up in the water. It wastes precious seconds. On the other hand, it does create a more frantic and challenging situation. What is also interesting is that each player could pick their own difficulty level and still play each other. In other words, I could play it on a hard difficulty level and the second player could play it on a normal difficulty level, which can make for a very interesting game dynamic. At the end of the day, it's quite simple. The frog who scores the most points wins the game. Though this version of the game is considered graphically superior to its Frog and Flies counterparts, the general consensus is that Frogs and Flies has far better controls. I can't really confirm that because I haven't played those, but I have to say, I didn't have any issues playing this on the PS2. There you have it folks, Frogbog for the Intellivision ported to the PS2. I have to say I enjoyed playing it and I would definitely give it an 8 out of 10. It wasn't the greatest game in the world, but it's a lot of fun, and it's definitely a game I would recommend checking out. That's all the time I have for today. Thank you so much for watching, and if this is the first time you've ever watched any of my videos, I would love to have you as a subscriber, so, so feel free to subscribe if you'd like to. Um, uh, likes, dislikes, comments below, what do you guys think? Thanks again for watching, and keep on gaming.